Right, that's enough for that. Welcome back to repairing lawnmowers for profit. Um, this video is going to be different. That's really weak, that tea, in it? I bet there's more comments on this video about that cup of tea than anything else. Um, I've got a problem. A couple of uh, keywords there, but I've got a bit of a problem. It's bank holiday weekend and I've run out of lawnmowers. And I've been watching Netflix. I've been watching Better Call Saul and Breaking Bad. And every time one of the episodes starts, there's these really snappy shots of like someone making a coffee from a really weird angle, which I don't have the skills to do. But I thought, you know what? I'm going to do that in my next lawnmower video. So in this video, we're going to do something completely different. So as most of you will know, that is the actual limitation of my camera skills. But I did have a thought. I was watching a video the other day and I suddenly realised that it would be really good if I could get multi-angle shots of repairing these lawnmowers and then I realised I have two video cameras I've never used simultaneously so in this video I'm going to look at a few different things I, I used to film my videos I'm going to try and get a, another camera mounted at the top so when I've got the mowers on my bench I can actually look down on top of these mowers and we can kind of uh, split screen these or just change angles and stuff because I've got no more to do today and it's a nice day so I'm disappointed in myself for not getting one. I wanted to come out and make a video really just to say thank you, just past 17,000 subscribers which is fantastic, it's something I'm incredibly proud of and it's nearly taken me 10 years to get there so it's, it's definitely uh, not Casey Neistat standard nor was my filming of the cup of tea either but I do appreciate that so if you're a subscriber of the channel I really appreciate you watching that over the last 10 years as well and uh, all the regulars that comment in the comment section thank you very much for supporting the channel right from the early days but in this video I'm going to do something different I haven't really sort of appeared on camera and talked to the subscribers and all, uh, all you great subscribers on the channel for quite a while I've just been busy filming the vids so I'm going to stop nattering on a little bit but I did want to say thank you um, just for passing that subscriber milestone. Seems a bit of a strange video to do 17,000 subscribers but it kind of dawns on you at some point that that's quite a lot of people that are subscribed to the channel. Um, just a little bit of info on other things I do as well. I get asked this quite a lot and really during lockdown it's been like a year now and I've actually written a, a brand new website and this website is called Stamp Sound, S T A M P Sound.com. So if you could actually type in Google Stamp Sound, Dot com and take a look at that website for me open a couple of the articles up and um, spend a couple of minutes on those pages you'd really be helping me out because it's a brand new website really been writing it for around a year which in, in website terms is uh, still relatively new if you would check out stampsound.com um, I would really appreciate that and there's also a link down in the description to the, uh, the YouTube channel I've just started for that as well anyway I'm gonna have a bit of a tinkering it's gonna be a bit of a tinkering video this and we'll see what we can do about getting set up and we'll, um, I guess we'll have a chat along the way. Yeah, I ate the biscuit by the way, for anyone who's wondering what happened to the uh, Jammy Dodger. I ate it. That's, yeah, it's a bit weak, isn't it? What do you think? Rate my tea. Leave it in the comments, please. Yeah, I've run out of lawnmowers. I've got my old mount field here. As I said, I've just bought a few bits. In fact, one thing I have bought that I don't think I've shown anybody yet that I really want to um, have a couple more goes with is this. I'll get this out, actually. Just bought this oil extractor and it's bigger than I thought but I'll put the camera down in a second I'll get this out and I'll show you it but I have actually changed the oil in my own mower and this thing is super powerful um, and I think this well it was off Amazon I can't remember exactly what it was called but I'll get it out and we'll have a quick look at this to start with unbelievable the first time I've come out to film a lawnmower video I've got lawn, lawnmowers like galore normally to film the first time ever I've come out to film a video and the tumble dryer is not on Unbelievable. Yeah, I just bought myself some uh, keyways the other day. See these little ones? They're only little uh, copies. They're not even genuine Briggs ones, but I've had these ones before. These are Rockwood. I get a few little things from the brand Rockwood. And these can go in my back box, if you've not seen this before. In my back box, I have all things that you might just need. And I've got a set of these. These are little governor springs. I haven't even tried these yet. In fact, we could try these in this video. We could swap these governor springs. These are just copies. And I think I got a set of three there. The, the big and the small ones. We could try them on my mower, I suppose. They're not genuine ones, but I could try them and see what my mower runs like before and after. In fact, we'll do that. Um, what else have I got in here? I've got a few other bits, you know, just things that you, you really just can't manage without if you're trying to fix a mower. Like one of these bolts, if you lose that. 
not what that's for. Um, primer bulb, that's what probably going to the bin. I've just got a few little things like kill switch wire, the screw out of a Briggs carb, a random spring, not sure why. Ah, look, I've got a few of these, but some of these have got little notches in them. I'm not sure if the ones I've taken out of other mowers, they don't look 100% perfect, so I bought some more. I've got the half moon keys, keyways here as well. They're actually above the blade adapter. Gasket for above the air filter, you get the idea. All the little things that you might lose. Linkage for SV150, if you lose that, you're dead. That's in there. Random spring. You get the idea. That's probably a spring off a Briggs carb. Uh, not very good condition though. So we'll have that in there. Linkage for Briggs carb. Might just lose that. All these little things. These go in the back cave. I'll oh, tick these in here. I think what we'll do in a minute when I've shown you this oil extractor is we'll try these aftermarket Briggs springs and see if they work. Um, these are quite quite cheap actually. I'll link to these in the description of this video. Um, I've actually just updated all the description links for everything I generally regularly use. So if you want anything for your mower servicing, you could um, take a look in the video descriptions and you can find some things in there. So I've got those there. I'll leave those ones out there. In fact, let's just get one of each of these out. And then I might get my mower outside, actually. We'll get this oil extractor out, and I'll show you that. And then we'll fit these governor springs and um, try them, see if they work. So if you've followed the channel for a few years now, you might have seen this. And I never, ever know what to call it. I sometimes call it peeler, I sometimes call it peller. This has really given up. And I've learned something... Um, <sighs> recently, or I think I have, about what you can and can't pump into these. Oh look, it's been on there for 10 years, I've hardly seen it. Do not use gasoline or other flammable liquids, do not pump more than that. I've never ever ever read that, but one thing I've read that I don't know if it's true is that they're only really designed to pump oil, if that's correct. Apparently it can ruin the seals if you pump petrol out, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep this one for petrol because it, it, it works but not very well with oil. I'm going to use the, the new one but only ever use it for oil and apparently it does something to the seals or gaskets inside them it can ruin them if you pump out petrol I don't know if that's true leave me a comment in the comments section if you think it's true if it's not true I have absolutely no idea but I want one of these because they appear to have quite a bit more suction than the other style but it's much bigger than I thought it's you know, I can imagine you watching now thinking, wow, that's total overkill for taking half a litre of oil out of, uh, out of a lawnmower. But I don't, I'm sick of struggling about and messing about with it. So the one thing I liked about this one, and I will link to this in the video description, the exact seller I bought it from, is that you can put your feet on here and you can just pump it like that. So the whole thing moving about and it, it has so much suction. You can pump it literally four or five times and it sucks the whole thing out. You don't have to keep doing it. It's, it just works. So it says, yeah, it says here, do not use gasoline in this operation. Yeah, don't ex uh, extract hazardous chemicals. But I think really they are, they are designed just to extract oil. Um, what I did with this one is I used this connector and these like rubber ends in here. And you put this in like that and you just shoved it in there. And I've got this in the lawnmower, this sounds really <laughs> obvious doesn't it? And I just pumped it up and it obviously just did it, but the reason I'm showing you that is that when you're finished there's this little button here and it just like a pressure relief valve and it just stops all the suction. So yeah I'm happy with it, it's just a bit big, but um, I'm going to keep it in the box because as you've already seen when you put these actual suction tubes, hoses back in anywhere and I've always tried to wrap them around here, it's always a little bit messy so I'm going to keep the box. Uh, put this in it and if it drips out of the bottom of it, I guess it'll collect in the cardboard box. I've got this with it, this metal rod came with it, I have no idea what this is for, so if you know what that's for that came with this, again please leave me a comment in the comments section. Um, but I'm happy with it, it was around, oh, I can't guess the price, but it wasn't as much as uh, like a Draper or a Sealy one, but it seems to work really well. The only other thing that I've got uh, an issue with it, apart from it being bigger than I realised, that is that with this one I can get this in the car and I can just put it in the boot of the car and go to the tip and obviously it's not going to topple over. Now this one, I really don't know what I'm going to do when it's full at the minute because obviously this just lifts off, there's no nothing to stop that tipping out and if it tips over in the back of the car 
you're just going to make a right mess. So what I'm going to do, I think this is 9 litres, is I'm going to get a 10 litre tub and I'm going to keep it somewhere in the garage. When this is getting full I'll tip it in another tub and take it to the tip. Something with a lid on. Something that's obviously you know, a bit bigger than that. Whatever that one is, that's two and a half. So I want the 10 litre tub to empty this out in. So that's one downside of changing the style of extractor. But um, I've been happy with the uh, the job it's done so far. My old woman's just arrived home. Look, she's in. She's taking some shopping in there. Look, there she is. Look, she said, "Don't worry, the tumble dryer will be on soon because she's washing the towels." So there we go. A brief appearance for uh, Mo a woman there. Not very often seen on the channel. There's the old tax disc from the old Yamaha jog. If you haven't seen those videos, there's a link in the top right hand corner. Right, let's drag the old faithful mount field out and let's tinker with these governor springs. What I'm going to do with this is I'll just start it up and show you it running. And then we'll swap the governor springs over. And we will see if it runs alright. If it does, I'm going to buy a few more sets of these because... Um, I don't really see very good aftermarket ones and I don't like aftermarket stuff particularly. But if they're alright, I'm going to buy a few more sets for the price of um, of these. It's kind of turned into a, a, like a retro restore tinkering vlog this, hasn't it? I don't think I've done a tinkering video before. It wasn't intentional, but um, that's what we're getting. Let's um, start this up and see if it runs perfect, which I know it does. And let's check it after we swap these springs over. So, fire this up. This is my own lawnmower, for anybody who doesn't know. This is actually mine, that I use regularly, so... It kicks back a bit, I've never been able to work out why. There we go, runs nice and even. So let's take that air filter box off. Let's swap these governor springs and let's see what it runs like. Right, let's whip this air filter box off. So many bits off this over the years, even to sell one. You know, sacrificed bits off my own lawnmower to sell one to make sure it's right for somebody who's bought it. Not know many people who do that really, but um, you still get people complain now and again. But most people who come to pick the mowers up that I sell are happy. Um, I'll, I'll let you into one trick that people do a lot as well sometimes especially on Facebook marketplace you get some real select people sometimes um, like the other week I was selling a lawnmower for I think I wanted £90 for it and he came and he said oh will you take 80 and I said no I said, it's, I said this time of year so I could sell that I said I've got a list this is what I always say which is true I said I've got a list of about 10 people queued up on Facebook Marketplace that'll all pay me £90 for it. Um, and then what you get is, this is the trick that they, they tend to use, is, oh, no, I've, I've only got uh, 80, oh, I've only got, uh, have you got change? Have you got change? I've only got £20 notes, have you got change? And every single time, I say, no. I say, I haven't got change, there's a cash machine just round the corner. If you want it, go and get some cash. And every single time, they go back to the car and they've just somehow found some money they didn't know they had in change or whatever and you always get what you want for it so if you've got a list of people queued up on Facebook to buy these mowers don't give them away, don't knock any money off especially this time of year maybe later on in sort of September time you could do that so I'm going to just get that cover off really I'm going to take this cover off here just so we can see in a little bit better let's take this off I could leave this cover off but I don't know, it just somehow looks better with it on. It kind of annoys me when it's not on, so I know it should be there. So that's off and out of the way. And we can see these springs now. If you look at these, these aren't actually uh, really particularly good. So I'm going to bin that one. I do find that one of the biggest problems with these is that it's real difficult sometimes to get the springs off without kind of ruining them and bending them all. And often you get them off and they're kind of pretty useless, so... I'll take that one off there. I'm going to try and unhook it. I'll probably try and save it just for um, desperate days. So I've got that one. It's not perfect on the end, but obviously it's been running on my own mower. And I don't really want to bend this one, but I do want to swap it because I want to try it with the new springs on. See what it runs like, just to see if the aftermarket springs are, are any good. So 
I'm just going to try and do this. I should take this recoil off really, that could get in a little bit easier. I'm going to unhook that off of there, I've got that one off there. And then let's take this one around here a little bit. And the bend's so easy. There we go. I've got that off, so let's grab the new springs. And although it's not the best example, we'll compare these sizes of these. Alright, let's go have a quick look. The tumble dryer's not on yet, it's great. Shouldn't mourn really, should I? Get all my clothes washed by my woman. Right, look. Right, okay, cool. That's the right size. I just said cool. Can't believe I just said that. Um, yeah, look pretty good. They look pretty good, don't they? So, that's the old one. And that's the old one. Let's put the new ones on and let's give it a go. Be great if these work well. Let's get this small one on first. I'm going to push that through there. They're not generally too bad to get on. Like that, that's that end on. And let's get this end in here. I feel quite good actually. They're quite um, the springs feel quite powerful. Let's hook that on there. It's real difficult to film and show you, but I'm basically going to try and pull that across there to pull it around this little loop here. Right, let's make sure that's on right this time. Yeah. And that's all that one does. I've seen that before and thought, well, that doesn't really do much, does it? It's, but it does offer some resistance. So I'm going to get this one on. This is the worst bit. Getting this part on here is fine. That, that's all right. You can just loop this part around. That's pretty simple. Kind of push it through the back and pull it back through, and that's on. And the bit that I always find real difficult to not break off the edge of the spring is this bit here. Let's get on there. On there. Just bend that back a little bit. Right, we're on. Look at that. Right, so, not the best example ever, I don't suppose. Look at that there, I've got the air filter gasket missing off there, but um, I'll leave it just for now, just to try it, it was ringing alright before. But they look alright, don't they? Can't see the um, problem there, everything looks like it's hooked on alright. This end's hooked on. All oh, this is round here, let's have a bit of a pull and a play around on here. Make sure nothing's going to fall off. Gets really aggressive and knocks anything. No, looks fine, doesn't it? So that back on there. Let's start this more up. If these work, I'm definitely going to get some more of these. And uh, not that it'll do me much good because they're not much to sell. It would help you if they do work. You could buy them using the link in the description of the video. It'll probably make me about five pence every time someone buys one if I'm lucky. Knowing I'm as an affiliate these days, but I put them there really. The link's in the description just to try and kind of help people out who regularly um, ask me in comments where do I buy this rather than me having to reply to them and say oh you can go here and find a link and tell them what the name of the part is it's just easier for me to link everything in the description right let's try it um, it should run the same as before really but the thing is it was obviously in need of some new springs on so the ones were pretty damaged so if there's an easier way of hooking those springs on let me know. I don't often have to do that, to be honest. I don't think I've done it for quite a while. Right, okay. So that's running way too fast, so we need to have another look at that. I must have messed something up, so let's do it. Let's take a look at um, what's gone wrong there. Right, just check that. Um, the camera ran out of battery, swapped it over. And I can remedy this in, in a couple of ways. You can lean this tab here back and that'll slow it down. And another thing I can do is I can just slightly pull these springs here, just to give it a bit less tension. So I think there's too much tension in the bigger spring. And this is why I don't really recommend too many aftermarket parts, but I'm just gonna stretch that out just a little bit like that. It's not an ideal way to do it at all, but I'm going to do that and I'm going to try it and we'll see what we get. Right, let's do that. Not ideal, but the springs are still attached properly, don't forget. And um, it's not going to come off. If it does the job, it does the job. So let's try it.
we go, that's better. So if you get these springs, if you do decide you want to save some money, you might just have to manipulate them a little bit. Obviously you're not um, really doing anything wrong, they're not going to change once you've stretched them a little bit, but well, they are just a little bit too strong. If you remember earlier, I said I keep these things in my bat box. This is why it's called a bat box by the way, it's got Batman on, don't ask. Um, this is why I keep these things in here because I'm going to put that back on. I said I keep obscure things in here that you might just want, that's one of them. So I'm going to put this back on and I'll show you where it goes in case you don't know. This just sits on top of the carb here, um, like this, so you get a better seal when you put your air filter back on, that's supposed to sit on there. And then I'll pop this air filter back on, like this look, let's just take that out there. That can slide over there like that, and on, this just goes in, and then in a second I'll start this motor up again. Now I'll put the air filter back on. I'll just make sure it runs at a good speed and I did what, what I did on the video there is I just bent that other little tab at the back forward a bit just to get it to run at exactly the speed I want I don't want this running too slow I don't want it running too fast I don't have loads of grass to cut and I don't leave it um, the grass long for ages either so it doesn't need kind of the extra speed to cut it it's never going to struggle that much so let's start this up again make sure everything's exactly as I want it I should be able to leave that sun's coming out as well which is nice I bet it'll be raining I've just got a lawnmower I've just um, had one dropped off I went to pick one up it'd be raining wouldn't it but because I've not got a new one to look at of course I've got a tumble dryer on and the sun's coming out anyway let's try this Still running a little bit fast but I can fix that and to be honest with you with the small amount of grass I've got I'm not really too bothered but the point is that it still runs evenly and if you wanted to save yourself a little bit of money if you're doing loads and loads and loads of these I, I would you know personally still I would probably still buy those in sets of three you can just get sort of a, a dozen of them just put them in your in your little spares box otherwise you're going to be paying about five six seven pounds just for one set of springs I'm going to quickly answer a, custo a couple of um, comments that I get. People want to know what tripod I've got. I have this Prima Photo Gear one, I think it was from Curry's. And the reason I have this is that it's got quite a, a long extension on it. So when I want to talk directly to the camera with it obviously facing me, it's high enough up so I ain't got to kind of bend down, squat down and try and look like I'm uh, pointing straight at the camera. So that's what I use. It's a Prima Photo thing. It has this thing that winds up and down here and three adjusters on there and no camera. Uh, expert at all, but I used to just have a cheap one like this here that one Martin Butler gave me actually I've lost the uh, end off it though which is unfortunate so I used to use that quite a lot but um, this one I used to have which is a basic Amazon special don't go high enough up so you, when you want to talk to the camera it's kind of lower than you and you're looking sort of down into the camera that's what I've got there but the cameras that I use I have two of these, I have a, a Canon H, which is the same thing, one's got a viewfinder and one hasn't. Is Allegria, this is Allegria HF S21, and I've used these right from the very first video. I've had it, well, 10 years now, and I have no problems with it. But my idea is that um, I want to mount one kind of up here. So when I've got these mowers on the bench, I can kind of shoot from the top looking down, because when I'm stood here sometimes... It's quite clumsy having all these great big tripod legs and things. You're trying to work around it, make sure you've not got shadows on the, the mower and things like that. You know, like Hank Marvin and Cliff Richard. It's a joke, that. Um, <laughs> and I want to be able to do that, what I normally do, and I want to be able to mount something so, kind of from up here, I can still look down at the bench and you can see what I'm doing. Because what these cameras have on them, they have like a flip screen. So I should be able to go like that, put it up there, um, and when it's on, I should be able to still see exactly what's filming on the screen, you see. So if I tilt that like that, you can see, I can actually see from up there what I'm filming. I just thought it'd be good to have good camera angles where 
you know, I'm not trying to film my, like outside then, my arm's blocking everything I'm trying to do. So it's a work in progress, but I'm going to spend 10 minutes seeing if I can find something to attach this camera up here. Right, so this is as good as I've got. Look at that. Um, definitely, probably, definitely, probably um, not a permanent way of doing it, but it's attached to the tripod and I can kind of move it about where I want and you can see here I'm filming down here you can see all this so when I'm working here and I'm normally filming my idea is that I can show you things from different angles like this so I'm going to switch this on the screen now so you actually see the footage from above this is the footage from above that I'm showing now so you can see there I've got a record light on here and obviously I'm, I'm filming now so I'll cut to the shot from above um, and you can probably realise now it's quite awkward for me because I'm looking at one camera and trying to work out that I'm going to be using this camera um, to actually clip this footage together. So it's quite strange really, but it's um, a good way to get started. So I haven't really got anything exciting to put on this bench. I've got, uh, I've got, uh, I've got uh, some sort of impeller pump from a boat. So if anyone wants one of these, this is on eBay. This has just been refurbished. It's got... Um, you can see here it's got a new shaft and um, seals in it. If anyone wants one of these, it's uh, a pump, came off a, a boat. Uh, I think it's an impeller pump. But anyway, that's what it is, it's on eBay. But you can see the advantage I've got kind of working for me. I can sort of show things on camera. I can kind of look at it, work out when it's not in focus and stuff like that. Because these aren't new video cameras. But I really like the um, the colour and the quality you get off them. And also you can attach uh, an external microphone to these as well. And it powers the microphone. So that's another advantage of that. So while I'm set up, I'm just going to do a quick video on this. Just to get your thoughts, please leave me a comment in the comment section of your thoughts if I'm doing these repair videos like this. Because I know it doesn't really matter, but um, I say I'm tinkering about. And I've done a lot of tinkering in this video. A lot of chatting, but I'm just interested to know your thoughts whether you think you can see more easily what I'm doing. This is like a Torx end on this as well, so I can sort of show you the tools. This drops down here, this must be about the fourth time I've taken this off today. Um, and I can get in and undo these screws. I just thought from above, of course, I can zoom in and out as well using the remote that I can get in. And I can just show you a little bit easier some of the things that you might want to see so obviously I can get nearer like this and you can kind of hopefully my arms aren't getting in the way all the time of everything I'm doing I'm trying to film from the side so you can probably see exactly what I'm doing so better set me on advice haven't I and undo this back but lead on let's take that off I'm just going to take a few bits off this mower just really just so you can watch and um, just so I can review this footage back as well I'll just take that out a little bit I'm going to grab my uh, Ryobi One Kenobi here got that I'm going to get myself a 10mm extended socket bend my head under here and it's quite nice for me because I ain't got the camera at the side of me either so I can get in here now and I can show you kind of how to take these recoils off and things like this you can probably see exactly what I'm doing around the other side of the mower as well I can get all that off and take this recoil off like that if I wanted to strip this down further I can obviously just zoom in and show you any parts that you might want to see from the top things like setting this uh, air vane here this actual governor or putting the springs on things like that so yeah I'm pretty happy with that it's obviously uh, probably a bit of a temporary thing but you can kind of see what I'm doing if I wanted to unzip this actual bolt off the top of here for example I can find the right part here I can easily show you this and you can see exactly what I'm doing still too small that one let's go with that and end up stripping all this down oh, I can feel it now I'll take that off there get myself something here I can show you this look my metal parts tray I've actually linked to one of these in the description as well these are super useful not much good for plastic so I'm not sure why that's in there I'm going to get that I'm going to get this here 
this has got like a quick release clutch mechanism on so I can just pull that. These work by pulling these. You just pull it out a little bit like that and then this goes in and it just kind of clicks in and it can't come out again. Then I'm going to get that socket where I've just put it that fits. So it's still on there, look at that. And I'm going to unzip this bolt here. And I can take all this off here. And obviously, if I wanted to, and I might do actually, I might just take off this actual flywheel under here because I have just bought some um, keyways for the top of this crankshaft. And this does kick back a little bit, although I have actually looked at it before. So I might actually just take this off. And hopefully, I can zoom in here and you can maybe just see the keyway. Let's take a look. You can see there from above, I can show you how square on this is. I can show you that it kind of isn't knocked across. You can see what I can see. You get the idea anyway. And you can see that that keyway looks nice and square through there. So I can release the brake on this as well. So I should get my remote really. I keep touching the camera. But let's just get this here. I've got the handle folded over. I just need to move that a little bit. I want to just use this cable. And it just releases the brake on the back. I get that there. I can use my Wilkinson clamp on the handle hold it out the way and the reason you might want to do that is you can now turn the flywheel to set it more easily and you can bump this actual flywheel off as well I tend to bump these off from underneath now with a rubber mallet I've got like a, an air compressor tool but my compressor isn't very powerful when I drop it down in here <laughs> and use it it vibrates you're supposed to be able to lift the flywheel off and the reason I'm laughing is that the box that that tool is in now has this camera on with my tripod laid across the top of it. So that hasn't been uh, thought out very well. But yeah, I normally just get a, a rubber mallet and I just bump this off from underneath. Other things you can try, things like these here, this massive sort of breaker bar if you like, you just put it under, pop these up. These can be quite awkward to get off. Obviously I don't really want to take it off. I don't need to, you just gotta be a little bit careful. You are supposed to use a puller Nobody really does anymore. If I bump that, eventually it'll come off from underneath. So I'm going to go get a sandwich, come back, and I might take that off. Just inspect that flywheel key. Give that a bit of a spray up before I go and have a sandwich. Let that sink down that hole. And hopefully you'll give me some feedback on um, what you think of this camera angle. And obviously I'll still use the other angles as well. Right, back to a nice ham and cheese sandwich. What I get is um, this big knocking stick, this big rubber mallet, and I'll put that under there. And then I just kind of smack this a little bit. Like that. And that'll come up. And for those that are eagle eyed, I'd actually loosen that off first. <laughs> and I tried to cheat, but um, I'd got that loosened off first, but that's how I got it off. And I wanted to show it, but it was loose that. Right, got that there. And then I can inspect this actual little keyway that sits in here. We can have a look at this. What you're looking for on here is any little notches around the sides of this. And this one doesn't look too bad to be fair. This one looks okay. But I have got some replacement ones of these. I've just bought them. So I am going to swap this and um, just make sure that the parts I've bought aren't going to cause me any further problems. So. I'll keep that one. I know it's not too bad. I said I've bought these ones that are in the description of the video, these Rockwood ones. So I'm going to get one of those out of here now. I'm going to try and make sure it fits and make sure there's no problems. And I only bought a couple of these just to absolutely make sure that they are the right size and they are going to fit. Hopefully you can just about see these. These are nicer and shiny. They feel quite light actually. They don't feel the best quality. But I'll try it. These are the things I do when I don't normally film. So I'm going to slide that down there. I'll show you how to do that again. I just normally put that from the top like that. Slide it down. They've got perfectly nice, neat keyway in there. I'm going to get this and drop this back down from the top. I might as well change this. Line that up there. Hopefully that should drop back down. These are the things I try because if it's too wide it won't fit. So let's take that back up a little bit.
let's just try the old keyway. Let's just check the size of it. It looks a little bit wider to me. I'm going to put the other keyway back in. I'm going to drop the flywheel in. So I'm having trouble with that. That feels a little bit too big. success with that either. don't normally find it that difficult actually. The only other thing I can do to make this a, this a little bit easier is to grab this here, grab a quarter inch. And I don't normally have to do this but I think the only reason I'm struggling is it's actually banging into this ignition coil so I'm going to un undo the ignition coil here. Or someone commented earlier saying this one's lubricating up this one. So I'll do that, thanks for that comment. I missed that when I serviced it. I think it was about two years ago on the video. I'm going to move that out of the way a little bit. Might just give me a little bit more room to get in. Um, I don't know if I have that much trouble doing this. I just normally drop that in there and drop the flywheel on. So let's try it now, I've got a little bit more room. Let's wriggle its way to the bottom and see if we've eventually got there. We've got that lined up. I just had to turn it around. I think it was just grabbing on the magnets of this ignition coil. So I'll spend a second in a minute just um, showing you how to set this back up. It only takes a second really. But you can see now I've got this keyway back in here. Everything looks nice and square. And this is a new one as well. This was the one I bought, which I think was a Rockwood one. I've linked to in the description. So if you can't get it in, you want to take off the actual brake at the back which is why I clamp the handle, this moves the brake away and you can always move away this ignition coil as well. Right, so I'll quickly set um, this ignition coil. Somebody said actually, I've just bought some new oil. Look, only just a normal thing of oil. I dropped my other one, it broke. Never tried this before. This is a multi-purpose three-in-one oil. Somebody said on the comments that I need to lubricate the shaft of the air vein, which I presume he meant this. So I will. So whoever that was, I'm doing it, look. I'm doing it. Um, I think it was on this video for this mower. We're definitely on one of these uh, type of engines anyway, so let's give that a little bit of a, a tickle. And drop that in there for good measure. And then, however I upset by not lubricating the um, air vein bolt, there you go, that's in. Right, I've got a, a lid of a disposable glove box. And I'm, you see how this, I've shown this so many times, you see how this ignition coil touches it grabs the magnets if you turn it like that it goes loose if you turn it back it grabs so you can't pull it away watch and then it comes loose you can see there that that's the place you need it to be to actually set this so I've grabbed my remote so I can see what I'm doing put this piece of card in this gap here like this really simple to do hold the card in position turn the flywheel till the magnets grab Again, like that, you can feel that the magnets have actually grabbed the flywheel, I can't separate that. I'm going to get this quarter inch, I think it is, socket with my newly lubricated air vein bolt. Tighten that up, make sure it still moves. Tighten the other one up here, make sure this one still moves. Oh, sorry, make sure it's tightened up, that one doesn't need to move. I was looking at the camera. And then turn this around here. Basically just get the card out, that's it. You've got a nice even gap. I guess I should have um, put the bolt back on the top of this engine first, so we'll do that now as well. But the flywheel's on, so we're going to put that back on as well. We'll grab these parts here. We've got the keyway back in there now, that's nice and square. I'll put this back on, find this bolt I took off. Make sure, again, and I say this so many times, make sure you've disconnected the spark plug like I have here and the lead. Just to be ultra, ultra, ultra careful, especially when you're doing things like this up. So I'll put that back on there. Tighten that up. That's it. That's done. So I've changed the keyway there. I've uh, lubricated the air vein um, bolt that goes through there 
got this ignition coil set up and this are the, these are the springs that I replaced earlier. You can see how I've stretched them slightly. I'm still running a little bit too fast so I'm going to nudge that back just a fraction. I'll put this cover back on. I might as well just clean this kill switch while I'm here as well. I don't look too bad actually, there's not much in there. But I will just give it a little bit of a clean. Just grab a fire brush. It should have a cover on really. Just while I've got this off here. Make sure this is clean. You probably just about see there that while I was doing that, this actual wire pulled out of here. So let's just get that in there a little bit. I'm actually just going to push that there, push this little tab down, make sure the wire actually goes back in there and that's bent up like that. And that's it, that's correct. Another quick question, I, I keep meaning to answer, I, where do I get these little clamps from? And I use these, if you've not seen these, I, um, I use these, instead of using cable ties, if I just want to quickly hold like a handle together like this, I'll just show you, see how it holds it together like that, I get asked where do you get these from? Well, I'm in the UK and I buy these from Wilkinson, and they're about, I don't know, probably a pound each, but they're, re they're really quite strong, so if you ever want to clamp something together, these are really quite handy, yeah, so you can see on that it's got Wilco written on. So whoever it was that um, asked me that question, these are really useful. I got them from Wilkinson. I can't remember where I bought the other ones from, probably somewhere like Asda or something cheap. These are only cheap, but they get the job done of um, changing these pull cord ropes. A couple of other quick um, questions that get asked. It's a Wolf air compressor, 25 litre. I didn't have a clue what size it was when someone asked me the other day. Karcher pressure washer, the cheapest possible one ever. This is a K2, there's no wheels on it, nowhere to put the hoses. It's absolutely cheap as chips. And I've got a video, I'm going to put in the top right hand corner and at the end of this video, um, a video showing you how to use snow foam on your car. And that's on my other channel, which is called Stampy's Random Reviews and Tutorials. And that video with this Karcher showing you how to badly snow foam your car has got nearly 300,000 views so um, yeah if you just in case you didn't realize I do have another channel I just find random really good tips I just put them on it and I use this stuff anyway there's a link as I said in the, at the end of the video I'll put it on but I think it's got like 300,000 views and I get all sorts of comments saying oh you don't know how to wash your car properly and all this stuff and I just don't care People um, just want to know how to mix the snow foam and get it to work with a, a cheap pressure washer like this Karcher one here. So if anybody wanted to know, I've got a Karcher K2 pressure washer. This is Mother Woman's um, exercise mat. I've just acquired this from upstairs. You know when you're leaning, kneeling on the floor? I haven't had a mat for a while, I used to have a little doormat. But I've just taken that from upstairs so hopefully she won't notice because she doesn't use it anymore anyway. So there we go, hopefully those um, shots from above will be a little bit different to watch anyway. Maybe we can include a few of those in uh, future videos. Let me know what you think in the comments section. But we've got the flywheel back on, we've changed the keyway at the top of that crankshaft. I've reset the ignition coil and I've just uh, bent that little tab back a little bit to slow this mower down. So let's give it a try. Let's start this mower up. Let's see if it's still running all right. And hopefully... We'll be back to where we were and we'll fit the new springs as well. That sounds nice, that's really nice.
and that's one really nice sweet sounding Briggs engine that really is running nice that um, always takes three or four pulls to start this mower it always has not sure why but it did kick back before I noticed then I, I don't have all that resistance pulling the cord so maybe maybe that um, keyway I've got has uh, done the job because it's kind of annoying really I'm wondering if it's going to snap your arm off but yeah it start, that starts and runs really nice I've got the speed about right using those new governor springs as well and we've actually got that keyway fitted the ignition coil sorted as well so a bit of tinkering about there as well and I'll go on about tools quite a bit and, but this Ryobi um, I've got here this impact driver here it's just fantastic it really is I mean if you look back to the, the first videos I did around sort of nine ten years ago when I was trying to get a blade off trying to hold a blade and undo it with a spanner and stuff it was a nightmare so I'm going to take this off just because I'm out here tinkering I've removed that spark plug wire but I mean it's this used to take me sometimes an hour but you just put it on it and it just you know you just it just flips it off like that and it just saves you so much stress it really does because it's the beginning of the year I'm going to just sharpen my blade up a bit it's relatively new this I'm just going to give it a little bit of a sharpen up I'm just giving that a bit of a sharpen up just put it on this little blade balancing tool I generally just turn it round a bit and make sure that it's pretty even and not one side is massively heavier than the other as you can see there I'm happy with that that's pretty good so zip this up with this little Ryobi again make sure it's sat on these pins they all show got a little bit of fuel leaking out there so it's quite a lot in the tank and it's not even tipped that far over so it might smoke a little bit but um, double check that's on there tight yeah, nice and sharp I might as well have it nice and my grass isn't particularly good this died last year when I had a paddling pool on it I've kind of reseeded that and it's just a bit of a mess if anyone has got any idea of what I can do with it apart from edge it and make it a bit better there but I've kind of put some grass seed down and tried to rake it in there we just don't get a lot of sun the sun sort of comes over the top and these parts don't get a lot of sun that died where I think I accidentally dropped some fuel on it or a carb tips over something and then this hole here if anyone's any good with this sort of stuff tell me what to do shall I re-turp it seed it patch repair it what do I do anyway as I've got that back together one thing you'll want to do as well is just start the mower after you've done that because it might smoke a little bit with it being tipped on its side so I'll start it up again I always like to start these up when they've been um, tipped over make sure there's nothing underneath it as well if you've been working I'll grab this wire plug this back in here um, and if it smokes a bit then it smokes a bit but it'll go off in a few minutes at least I've got a nice sharp blade for this summer good it's not very often to do maintenance on my own lawnmower but while I've not got an extra one in to do it's good to do something I suppose it's a nice day to be uh, stuck inside So there we go, we've had a bit of a tinker about today, just this little tinkering vlog I've never done before. I hope um, you've enjoyed it and maybe learnt something along the way as well. Again, please um, do me a massive favour and take a look at the new website which is stampsound.com. Um, S-T-A-M-P sound.com, you'd be doing me a massive favour if you could just go to one of the articles there and maybe just uh, read through it for a couple of minutes, I'd appreciate that. But I just want to say thanks to you all for subscribing as well, 17,000 subscribers. I really, really do appreciate you watching. I hope you have a happy Easter and a well-earned few days off, if time allows. Thanks for watching, and I will see you again in the next video.